Hello everyone, this is Scott Woods, Product Manager for SolidWorks Composer here at Hawkridge System, and this is video four of our four-part series for Composer projects. This video is going to go over actually how to use projects um, in kind of a, a real-life situation, and uh, if you are uncertain of what projects are, or if they are pertaining to what you need to get done, uh, go ahead and check out the first two videos of this series. It really it, um, kind of explains what the difference is between using projects and not using projects and when to use either method. Okay, so I'm going to jump right into Composer here. And just as a kind of a recap from the last video, what I have here is I have a structure for Composer, uh, Composer projects. This very first folder is our top level composer project that has a bunch of parts nested into the project. The parts that are nested into that project are in the subassembly level. These have been exported from the composer SMG file. Um, they're still linked to that file, and so when SolidWorks is updated, we update that file, push them out, all of these files are updated, thus uh, updating the project that's linking to those files. This is a bit of manual update. Um, once you get down this road and you have everything working out how you want it and you're like, you know what, there should be a way to automate this, there is. Um, SolidWorks uh, Sync Enterprise will update this. It's another solution that we provide and offer and support. So once you get to this stage, if you want to automate this process, let us know and we'll walk you down that, um, that path. But uh, this video is on how to update everything manually. Now we get into how to actually use these products and the projects. There's two different things going on here. Products are items that are go that come that, that are brought into projects. So projects manage the products. Products are basically sub-assemblies from SolidWorks. It's really all they are. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say file new project. I'm going to specify where to put this project at. So really I want to put this into the folder that I'm currently working on and you'll see that I have the uh, project top level assembly, sub assemblies, and then projects. I'm going to go and put this right into the project file and I'm going to call this, I don't know, nest one, just lack of a better term here. So let's say that we have multiple uh, departments within the company who all use Composer and they all need to access the top level, top level information from the SOLIDWORKS assembly. So what we did in the previous video is we actually created a SOLIDWORKS Composer project. Now that project can be nested into other products, other projects, and then items can be added to that nested project which means everybody's pointing to this source file. This source file is being updated with the SOLIDWORKS model. So once SOLIDWORKS is updated, the source file is updated, everybody linking to that has their content updated, and they've added more stuff to it. And so let's say tech pubs need to add like kits and another, another um, you know, design engineering needs it for assembly shop floor drawings. Um, then they're not interfering with each other. They all can work off their own files, but they are all linked together because they're all pointing to that source file. Now here are the files that are in the source file. I want to actually link directly to the source file itself, which is our original project we created in the previous video. So opening that into my project, I can come in here, I just created a view. Um, I, I can come in here and I can take a look and see that these are all nested projects into my current project. I save this. You know, I can come in here, I can do whatever I want. I can create, you know, exploded views, um, build materials, change the color, move things around, create all my step-by-step -step stuff. I can even, in this root level, I can go ahead and I can open, merging into the current document, and I can merge in anything I want. Let's go ahead and take that screwdriver from our second video in this series. And I want to go ahead and merge that into my current project. So by doing that, I've taken the screwdriver and uh, I can move it around, maybe show it unscreen some stuff. But really the point of this is not to show how to move things around, but to show how in this project I have now nested multiple items. So I'm going to go ahead and save my project. 
and to show when this original project is updated how my current project is uh, affected. So if I were to open and let's go into our project and open up the kind of source project file. You can see that this file hasn't had anything basically done to it. But it is being nested um, into my other projects. So uh, when I do an update, and let's go ahead and let's say that uh, in SOLIDWORKS we create an update that trickled down and updated one of our products. And to mimic that process, I'm going to go into my subassembly and let's go into our, let's go to this guy here, sure, into the, the chassis. And let's say that this chassis did not have a transparent top and let's just make it something so it's very obvious that there is a change. I just went ahead and made that green. I'm going to go ahead and set that as the neutral property for this document. I'm going to create views, it doesn't really matter. I just like to create views sometimes just to kind of save the current um, status. Alright, I'll go ahead and save this file. So my SMG XML file for the chassis has been updated. I went into Composer, forced that change it would have had the same effect if we went into SOLIDWORKS, made the change, and then updated the composer files. So it's really the, the exact same um, end result. But this way is just a little bit quicker to show in the video. Okay, so now what I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and just close, close and save our projects here. So I have my main project and my nest. So if I go into my main project and I open it up, I'll see that in my project, that shell, I'm just going to refresh the view there, it will update, is green. The reason why this updated is because in this project, this kind of the source file project, we're not doing anything here. The, this project file is just a link. It's an it's a empty shell that's linking to a bunch of products in that folder. The products in the assembly sub-assembly folder are being updated by SOLIDWORKS. So we make a change in SOLIDWORKS, everything in that folder gets updated. This nested project, or the project that is nested into other items, just assembles all those components together and keeps them all nice and uh, updated with the original content. In this case, it would be the green shell. Now, the project that I used, that I nested this project into, will now show that change, but items such as my screwdriver will remain in there. So now I have this nested project. Now we go back to the individual projects that each group is managing independently. Uh, this nest one project, if I were to open it up now, because it's referencing that top level project and nested into this project, we get the uh, change such as the, uh, the green shell, um, but anything we've done in this project remains, such as the screwdriver, our exploded views, and not. You look at the assembly tree, we can see that this is actually a project that's been nested into this project. And the project that we are nesting into here, we can nest into as many other projects as we like company-wide. So everybody can access the same source of information, add whatever they need to it to get their job done. Um, and then that source file is being managed by um, SOLIDWORKS, so it's being updated with the recent SOLIDWORKS changes that trickle down into each sub uh, project. And so that really wraps it up as far as when uh, and when not to use Composer projects. So once we get into this level is when we actually have to start delving into the world of projects. Things become a little bit more complicated, but you have a lot more um, freedom and uh, you're able to really use Composer at an enterprise level compared to this single file that all the data is dumped into and we output content. So really two totally distinct and separate workflows using SOLIDWORKS Composer. Okay, well I hope that this series was helpful. Um, again, my name is Scott Woods, Product Manager for Hawkridge Systems, and uh, you guys uh, were able to learn something and enjoyed the material. Thank you.